Journeys Through the Decades, a series of videos dedicated to hardware and technology from the past. For this first episode, we need to set our time machines to 1979. Margaret Thatcher had just become Prime Minister in the UK and Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols had committed suicide after killing his girlfriend in a hotel room. But hey, we're not here to talk about such grim nonsense. We're here to talk about a little company known as Atari. You might recall that they had that wood-cladded monolith of a console known as the Atari 2600. Or perhaps you're still traumatised by what Atari were up to in the 90s. Knock it off! But I'm not here to talk about consoles today. I'm here to talk about the exciting new world of 8-bit computing in the 80s. Introducing Atari's 8-bit line of computers. This was their attempt to nuzzle in, so to speak, on Commodore and Apple's success within the home in terms of the new emerging technology of microcomputers. This was the beginnings of every electronics company and their granny wanting to make a microcomputer of their own. But we'll be talking about the rest of those machines another day. So this is the Atari 8-bit computer that I own, this is an Atari 600XL. Now you might notice it looks a little bit different from the original line of computers and you would be correct in saying so because this one doesn't look like a spaceship. <laughs> this one sort of looks like it belongs in an executive office alongside a walnut desk and some leather clad sofas. So there was a series of changes made to these newer machines, um, they have more RAM and they also have BASIC built into the machine which is the coding language of which operates the computer. Now this means that you only needed one cartridge slot on the top but they were definitely keeping the cartridge slot because it was part of their strategy for making software accessible in the home quickly and easily. So. If you did fancy it, you could pick up a copy of Dig Dug on a cartridge, pop it in the top and mutilate some underground lizards within seconds. So what do you get for your money when you buy a 600XL Atari computer? Well, as already forementioned, you get the cartridge slot on the top which is compatible with a range of cartridge software. You get a rather nice clicky keyboard of which is miles better than the dead flesh keyboards uh, found on the likes of the original 8-bit line and the ZX Spectrum and other such delights. You get a lovely sort of array of menu buttons down the side which make operating the machine a little bit easier. And we'll flip around the back and show you what's on there. So there's not a lot going on in the back of this machine. You have a peripheral port there for using tape drives, floppy drives and any other sort of drives you may wish to use. We have a parallel bus there of which is used for memory expansions and other such delights. We have a, an RF port there of which no one will really use anymore but basically you used to use an RF port if you were tuning it into an old TV because old TVs didn't always have SCART or Composite. Um, if we go over to the right some more, we have a monitor port there which wasn't on the US release of this machine. We were quite lucky to get that in the UK and it's basically just a port that outputs composite. We have a power in sort of socket there which if you lose the power supply for this machine you can't just go and use something off another, you know, another 8-bit machine or console because it was specific to this machine. And we have an on-off switch at the back. Once you get the whole system set up, there are over 2,000 things you can do with it. When you love video games as much as me, it's easy to forget that the Atari 8-bit computer is in fact a computer. You could of course carry out many mundane tasks on one of these machines such as word processing on Atari Writer. There was also a vast collection of programming languages you could utilise on an Atari 8-bit machine, so it was quite a versatile machine in terms of creating software for it. Let's be honest though, we want to see what games this thing can play, so let's have a look at some of them. So as I mentioned before, there's a couple of different ways you can load games into this machine. You've got the classic video game cartridge of which slots in the top like that. You could either do that or you could plug a tape deck into the port at the back and that would allow you to load cassette tapes, of which takes considerably longer. 
or you could use floppy disks of which we're not going to look at today because I don't own a drive. Right, so what we're going to try first is we're going to try and load one of the games into the machine using the cassette deck and the cassette inside the deck. Um, I currently have loaded into the deck. Chucky Egg. So we're going to give it a go. It's not guaranteed to work and it might take a bloody long time, but we're going to do it in the name of science. Well that definitely didn't work, so let's try another game I suppose. Right, let's try a different game instead of Chucky Egg. I have Phantom for the Atari 8-bit and it's on a funky green cassette. The whole thing seems to have went silent. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, oh no, the sound's back. I'm beginning to think this game might be haunted. Keep in mind that no one in the 80s seemed to care about ripping things off. Something strange was indeed going down in this particular neighbourhood. <laughs> so I've spent so long trying to get a game to load from a cassette tape into this computer that the sun has actually begun to set outside. So instead of wasting any more time with that, let's just have a look at some cartridges. Great thing about video game cartridges is you don't have to wait on anything loading, so we can play games right here, right now, and we don't have to muck around with a cassette deck or a floppy disk drive or any of that magnetic nonsense. The great thing about this computer is that it uses a DB9 controller port, which means we can use a multitude of different controllers, and it's really up to your own preferences what you use. Atari probably expected people to be using these classic Atari joysticks, and as time went on they upgraded their design of the joysticks and eventually they came up with their own controller that looks like this. Now I'm personally going to use a Master System controller because it's what I had to hand and it's actually a bit better to hold and feels a bit more comfortable than those other types of controllers. As for the cartridges that this system uses, they come in a multitude of different varieties and designs. You get these sort of classic Atari cartridges that were originally released with the 8-bit line and they honestly, they're built like a tank, they're made of metal. They have this sort of shutter at the bottom to make sure the pins don't get dirty and they're quite weighty but they also look kind of ugly and they don't have any labels on their spine so if you're looking to set these on a shelf you're probably going to want to label them because you're going to have no idea what any of the cartridges actually hold. The next kind of cartridge type that you get is these sort of plastic ones and um, this was after Atari moved away from the sort of metal design and you'll also find these plastic cartridges when it comes to third party games for the system. Another interesting point to make about the cartridges is that they have this left cartridge label written on their spine with arrows pointing to the left. Now that's because on the original 8-bit line there was two cartridge slots on the machine and one of them at the right was supposed to be for a, a programming language so that you could plug in a cartridge for, for example, Atari Basic, you'd plug that into the right and then on the left you would plug in your game or your piece of software because both were required to actually run. Anyway, let's just cut to the chase and show you a montage of my favourite games for the Atari 8-bit computer.
Atari continued their legacy of the 8-bit family for many years after its release. Even the successor to the legendary Atari 2600 was based on the Atari 8-bits hardware, which maybe explains why you can see similarities between Atari 5200 games and the games I've shown you today. It's a shame that I couldn't get a cassette game to actually load into the computer today, but nevertheless I can keep that for another episode of Through the Decades. The Atari 8-bit computer is extraordinary, and if you're a retro gamer or even someone who's just interested in old computers, then this is a must-have for your collection. And that concludes our first episode of Through the Decades. We hope you'll join us again for an adventure into the forgotten realms of old technology sometime in the future. But until then, thanks very much for watching.